Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is the Fairfax County History Commission Confederate Names Committee meeting. The meeting is Wednesday, October 28th. It's two o'clock. Um, our attendee call in is 1-408-418-9388. And our event number is 173-760-0052. Calling to order to conduct to conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance. This board needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It is a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. The audibility of members voices. First, because each member of this board is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and an appropriate volume for all of the other members. Accordingly, I am going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. Roll call. Ann Stunts. I'm here. I'm in Vienna. Carol Herrick. I'm here in McLean, Vienna, of uh, Virginia. <laughs> Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy in Springfield. Tammy Manon, Manon I always do it wrong. Manorino. <laughs> you got it. Good. I am in Mount Vernon. <laughs> Phyllis Walker Ford. Phyllis Ford in Clifton, Virginia. Right. Staff. 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 Niece Dressel. Niece Dressel in Prince William, Virginia. Liz Crowell. Liz Crowell in Alexandria, Virginia. Chris Barbashak. Chris Barbashak, Fairfax, Virginia. Greg Wilson in Great Falls is absent today. I'm Barbara Nafe and I'm in Reston, Virginia. At this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to Commission Chairman Ann Stunt so that I may be heard to make the requisite motion. I move that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. In the second. Second, Mary Lipsy. All, all can hear all, a yay. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Second. Second. Oops, I'm echoing. Oops, I'm echoing. Having established, established each member's voice may be heard by every other member, we must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures. The fact that we are meeting electronically, what time of elect what type of electronic communication is being used and how we have arranged for public access to this meeting. Therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this board to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of this board and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that this board may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated telephone line and that the public may access this meeting by WebEx virtual meeting. Attendee call in 1-408-418-9388. Event number 173-760-0052. It is so moved. A vote, a second, and a vote. Second. All second. It's Tammy. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> the need to dispense with FOIA's usual procedures to assure continuity in government continue operations. Finally, it is next required that all of the matters addressed on today's agenda must address the state of emergency itself, are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of this board's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. It is so moved. In favor. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I will take the gavel back and thank you very much. 
All right, next, um, this at this point, some chairman comments and I wrote them out so that I don't wander. First of all, if we were in a room together, I would ask us all to stand and give a five minute ovation to <laughs> Denise and Chris. Honestly, you all have, you cannot conceive what these two people are doing. It's, it's blows my mind. So I, I thank you, it's very sincere and that's the only way I knew to do it. Um, secondly, I wanted to mention, I don't know how many were able to see uh, the Virginia Africana uh, lecture that we learned about from Phyllis. Um, Phyllis, I think it's recorded so they can go onto the site and see it if they did not, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. If, if. okay, it was, it's, it's fascinating. I learned so much and it's, um, as I, I, I'm not sure who I've said this to, but, it, you know, when we're dealing with what we're dealing with now and we're in, we have worked on the lost cause 2,500 times we've gone over it at this point, it seems like. But you, you understand that the, the, you understand that the, the format of the society that dealt with slavery, it's in the 1600s and we all knew it. But when you read, when you hear, hear them talking and providing the specific laws and all, it's, it's amazing. It's reconfirming and um, I applaud them and I understand from Phyllis that the organization is going to do more like this. This was their first uh, virtual um, lecture and it was excellent. So if you have time and didn't see it, please look it up and go. Um, secondly, this Confederate Names Inventory Report is obviously in flux. We finished the acknowledgments, uh, not the executive summary yet, that's coming. There have been changes to the formatting, um, as you see, or if you um, have been able to look at your documents, the African American History Initiative is going into the executive summary. We decided we, this was, I think this is a great idea. It's not a next step for the BO, it's ours, and we're putting it up there and saying, here's the situation, and therefore this is what we, the History Commission, are gonna do. So I think it will be a very strong position. My responsibility is um, addressing all the proposed edits to the narratives. Um, to that end, I have sent you multiple revisions. The most recent edits arrived today after 11 a.m. <clears throat> and, the, and the last one I sent to you, again on the lost cause, was about uh, 120. So if you haven't looked at it, I understand, all right? Um, Cheryl is listening in and I will note, she sent, she spent a lot of time, late hours doing it. I appreciated it. I, ex, um, on the Civil War um, in Fairfax County, accepted those. And then I realized working through the lost cause that she, through no fault of her own, was working on a previous version. This is what's happening to all of us, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, it, I thanked her and I, I used what I could in the current one. Um, as I just as I text you all last Friday, <clears throat> the discussion, review, editing, and approving of all of the narratives except for the lost cause had been completed. However, people are doing second and third reads, and that's led to more proposed edits. So um, it's evident that I have been frustrated, and I've sounded that way with some of you. I want to. But, you know, I appreciate your scholarship and your proposals and each each round. I think we're getting better and better and I've incorporated as much that I that has been offered um, with two thoughts in mind. Our mantra, as you know, is this is not an academic exercise. We're offering background information that directly and succinctly supports the Confederate names inventory, which is our charge. We started with word count objectives, and now we've ended up with page count objectives. This report will be reviewed several times going up the chain before it gets to the BOS. And we have to... What causes that? No? 
I have no idea. I have no idea what causes that. My point is that we have to be concerned with the quantity as well as the quality. And that's what I'll say. Okay. So those are my, that's my preamble. Um, I changed the, the um, agenda a bit. First is the, um, are the minutes from our last meeting? And I don't believe I received no changes and I don't think Tammy did either. So um, if you all agree, we will approve the minutes as read, I mean, as written. Agree? I move we approve the minutes as written. All right, a second. Raise your hand. Okay. Um, all in favor of approving the minutes as as written and reviewed. Aye. 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 Okay. Now, what I've done on this latest agenda is that I kind of reorganized it just a little bit to provide. Um, we're going to go through the updates for the narratives, and then the. the Hopefully we can get through this and then Denise is going to deal with the, um, the report itself the, the, and all of the different things that are happening, if that's okay with everyone. Um, the, first, the first draft um, change is the um, report outline, all right, which you all have, I hope, have received and you can just see um, Denise and Ann and I meet on Fridays. We call it the mini meeting. And so as, as we've been developing the report, we have found that certain things fit better someplace else to make it a smooth integrated document. So this is just for your FYI. And as you see at the, in the executive summary, um, the history commission's African-American initiative will be there. Um, on background, we have Civil War in Fairfax County, the Lost Cause, we have the brochure and the markers, and a marker count that I, we will get to in a moment. Um, and then we go into the project me methodologies, and within that are the family names, explanation, then the project results, the data, and um, Finally, um, renaming process and procedures, pr the process for changing names, a resource type, the controlling agency, and the cost. Recommendations, this is where our two recommendations will go. And then we have in, um, in there the ARB recommendations, the Fairfax City process for handling these, the name changing, the Alexandria City model for dealing with Confederate names, and the guidance to documents that have been compiled by the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, the American Association for State and Local History, the National Trust, the Preservation Virginia, and the Virginia Department of Historic Resources. The end matter is acknowledgments and uh, bibliography. And the addenda, as you all remember, is the Civil War brochure and the countywide Civil War markers, the, the, the list of them. And in appendices, what we have is the compiled filtered list divided into magisterial districts. That's what we have. Um, I, it's, it's interesting. Um, if you have any questions, I, there are some people, some concerned citizens that somehow think that the history commissions, the, the idea of recommendations in the report have to do that we're recommending uh, specific actions, like we are saying, get rid of this, do this, do that, change this name. And of course, we're not. <clears throat> so if any of you are contacted individually and ask that, you can assure them that that's, that is all up to the Board of Supervisors. We are simply offering recommendations and how they can go about it. And that's the limit of it. And as you know, our, our, our two recommendations are one is that we want all of this research to go into the Virginia room. Chris, we may need to build an annex for you with all of this that's coming in, I think. Um, and the second is that we want a robust public process for whatever it is they decide to do. Those are the two coming from the History Commission. Any questions at all on this? Okay. Silence is good. Wait, wait. 
You thought you lucked out, but my my mute was on. Oh, all right, Anne, my buddy. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was thinking. Um, I, I just would. I want to. I do want to look again at. Um, not what I'm doing right now. Um, at the at those two recommendations because because you know. It's kind of short and brief. And yet, what we really want them to do is look at um, all the re really take to heart all the recommendations that um, that were that were all the guidelines we're giving them. So um, I just it it's just been something that's been kind of nagging at the back of my mind that our recommendation to do that is very brief, and maybe that makes it more powerful, but also maybe it makes it wimpy. I, Good, good for my my re my response to that is that when you and I are called before the high court on December eighth, that's what we say. Yes, but this is our this is the record that will outlast you and me. But so. and it's very specific. That's fine. We we can debate later. Ann and I debate all the time. But um, I'm I'm going to quote Liz. I'm going to quote Liz here. Less is more. We're very specific. This is what you need to do. But anyway, I've written down a note that you want to look at that. Okay. Right, yeah. Anything else? Okay. I would, just, I would just echo what Ann says. I think I think it's important to um, to have a metric like they can say, yes, we had a robust public process and and maybe just a little bit more about what the definition of that is. I, I don't know. So I, I just I think it's a good idea to make sure that the document echoes what you're going to say in person. Okay, got it. <clears throat> Anything else? Appreciate my humor sort of covers exhaustion, so I take all this seriously. I really <laughs> do. Okay. So the next is civil war in Fairfax County. Now. Um, Cheryl knows this because I emailed her this morning. She she went through and found a mistake in in uh, Greg's numbers, and so um, I sent. In case you all haven't read your email, I sent Greg an email this morning and said, "I know you're busy. You're not coming, but I need to confirm. You say eighteen thousand soldiers <clears throat> under command of McDowell advanced through the county, and Cheryl has found a number at thirty five thousand. And also found a number of 28,450 that were routed and retreated uh, through the county after uh, the Battle of First Manassas or Bull Run. And Greg responded that that was correct. And so that is the correction that's been done on that. Okay. So thank you, Cheryl. You can hear. And so as far Good as. Pardon me? Good catch. Yes, so as far as I'm concerned, unless there's something else at this point, the revision as of 1028, yours says 1024, but it's 1028 is the is what I sent out today. And what I'm doing is Denise has provided the we have the draft of the report. So I pull the pull it out, put it on my desktop, make the changes, send it to Denise so she can put it right back in there. And I have started noting the date of the revisions on the top. My next step is to go through my little file that says narratives and clear out all the previous ones because we're, we're our stack is building, okay? Any further questions on that one? Okay, that's good. The next is our favorite topic and that is the lost cause. Um, and it's been an interesting experience. Um, just, just because there's been much passion and concern. I provided you all with the bibliography just so you could that reflects the amount of research that I did in, in making the first draft. Um, it's an effort to assure you that the statements were documented. Um, the debate has centered on particular words, on the tone, on whether some language is judgmental, on whether we should have it at all, uh, or what should be included. The objective is to be factual. With everyone's help, I think we will achieve that. I would also like to thank those who have read it and concurred with and just said it's good with good for me. Um, 
So it's, it's an interesting topic. And one of my points was because supervisor walk, um, Walkinshaw, right? Walkinshaw mm -hmm. yeah. made his statements at the hearing from wherever he is. I assume staff collected that for him. Um, I, it, it was sort of choppy and pulled things out. And so I thought it was very important that we present what I'm, we're talking about the ideology. That's what we're explaining is how it came about and a succinct statement of what it was and then how it affected Fairfax County. And I thank Tammy and Cheryl for their understanding because originally they were going to write a separate essay about the lost cause in Fairfax County. And as we went along, we decided that we could include it in this one. So I appreciate their help on that. Um, so I'm, I'm open to the, and I'm not even sure if you all have been able to see, um, <laughs> the last one, because I, as I said, I sent it with like 35 minutes before this meeting, because I was trying to get everything in. Um, and I, I used everybody's, uh, Carol has done, you know, we, we, if you look at us here, we have, we have people that have authored books counting, including Greg and Carol and whoever else. We have two PhDs. We have a lot of us who have worked our whole life in public history and have the advanced degrees in it. So we're all together doing this as a committee. And it's an interesting experience. So <laughs> that's, and so this is the eight, the 1028 revision. And if you all have no comments right now, it does not mean, I promise you that you can't change something today or tomorrow. And I think Denise said to Friday is that is it. Denise has extended this beyond. So she is really crunched and we're getting emails from Denise like at midnight. I got this one from Cheryl. It was midnight or one or some crazy time. So I realize everybody is pressing. Um, but I think we're factual. The one thing that I did, I did make a mistake on, which I have corrected and lots of people told me about it. Um, I was remembering Marion Dobbins telling me about, about her, about education and no place to go to high school. But of course I had, I had sort of ignored the fact that there was sort of primary education. It certainly was inadequate. And so what I've done, instead of saying no schools, if you go down to under echoes of the lost cause, I have said the latest effort was. I can find it. Um, and their access to primary education was in, inadequate in every sense. Yes, thank you. That's what I said. So I think that Mary, I called Mary this morning because of course Mary's written has a whole pay, a whole piece on um, African American schools and pointed out that it was the details are wonderful, but it would be a whole paragraph and we simply can't do it because this is already probably too long. Um, so. Barbara, this is on the 1028. Yes. 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 Where yes. is that? I'm, I'm having trouble finding that. It's in the paragraph above echoes. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. See right there. It's if I you gotcha. find the little the number three, um, uh, footnote, blacks could not vote. Their homes were uh, essentially ghettoized. I like that. That's one. I got rid of some words I loved and I gave them <laughs> up. that word. Yes. I have not given up and their access to primary education was inadequate in every sense. Gotcha. Which it was. So that's, was. that's was. what I did. Okay. Excellent. So, Thank you. Um, Barbara, this is Mary. Yes, Mary. I did get to read it. And I was just one thing is that. I think we need a uh, a concluding sentence. It kind of the last sentence kind of leaves you hanging. And I would just I would just reiterate something with lost cause in it. That's my only suggestion. Where where, so, where are we at the last the of, very last sentence on the last page? Name referencing those actions as well as Union troops found their way onto county maps. Yes. The, okay. The first thing is about the lost cause. And so that's what I would just suggest that you have a okay. concluding sentence that says wraps it up. It wraps it up. Okay, I need a wrap up. Anyone that wants to volunteer, send it to me. Okay. 
That's not the first time I've had a question about it, and it's ended differently than than it did before, but if we still need to work on it, that's fine. That sentence wrap up. Okay, anything else at this time? Uh, Chris, just, Chris sent me a note today um, that said that I referenced the originally said only, but then I referenced one referring to the John Quincy Marr monument. And he points out that the, the one on, I'm blanking on his first name, Anderson. Peyton. Yes, Peyton. It was was originally when it was when it was put up in Fairfax County, but it was moved to Fairfax City. So Chris's question was, is it worth um, including? And so, I don't know. I thought I would save that and unless you all have a strong view and talk to Ann and Denise about it on Friday. Since it's no longer there, it was removed. And so we're, we're trying to give them, again, we, it's so tempting to give them the entire, you know, the entire thing that the Netherton book is, you know, you want to tell them everything and we really can't. So I'm, um, we'll defer that to Denise and Ann, um, unless somebody here has a strong thought on it. Because it's not there now and it wasn't there. I don't when they moved it. I take it a while ago. Unless you know, Chris, when it was moved. The the sixties. I, I can't remember for sure. But okay. uh, I, my only impression was that in that original draft you would say that it seemed like there was it was trying to give an overview that actually only one monument was put in the county when really there was two. But so now it's probably not really needed. And we got and I got rid of the word only. Yeah, so it's probably right. That's good. my memory too. Is that it was it was pointed that it was a singleton, and this exactly. the way it reads now is just a monument, and I think that's great. Okay. Another another point on the monument, mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't thought of this till I was just reading through it. Oops. Um, I was just reading through everything again, and and um, and this doesn't bring the Mar situation to a conclusion, and it might be by the date of it. Um, you know, if, if this is going to stand as a document of its time, we might end up saying the Mar Monument, which was removed on uh, X date or something. You know, don't, we have to remember that the Did date it? of this is going to be in a month, and I don't know what's the timing for. Mm -hmm. I think you could say. Uh, that the Board of Supervisors voted to remove. I don't okay. believe we have a removal date yet, uh, nor will we by the time this is released from the History Commission. Okay. Okay. Got it. I, I will, I've made a note and we will make a little um, <clears throat> a note there, whether it's in like a parenthetical or with a footnote or something. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, Good point. Added it. I don't think I did, but somebody added it into the marker list. That it says the BOS has voted to remove it. So in my the template for the markers, it is stated there also. It's stated to be yes, to be removed, but it has been removed. So we note that the vote is right. what's happened, correct? Correct. Okay. Good. Anything else? Lordy. That's good. I also am quitting, you know, when I send them to you, I put final, finny, I'm quit doing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just like, all right, I give it up. I give up. Okay. Um, the next is the markers. This is, I think, a great addition. Somewhere we started talking because we are concerned. Um, at one point. Uh, one of the supervisors used the word that they are going to be deconfederizing, deconfederatizing things. And as we know, the marker is on its way out, and we have the streets, uh, I mean, the mo monument, and we have the streets, and we have markers that we are working hard to exempt from anything. So we decided to have this totals by category, Fairfax County Historical Markers. And they there is a, um, 
I think I sent you all the interpretive marker statement. The first paragraph is the same, but we added a second one that says the table provides subject totals by interpretive marker type. Confederate markers are those with content exclusive to Confederate actions or personages. Markers identified as union are those with content exclusive to union actions or personages. If both union and Confederate are referenced, the markers are categorized as civil war. One half of the historical markers throughout the county are identified as such. And we have, as you can see, a total of 93, 28 Confederate, 18 Union, and 47 Civil War. And there we list them as Confederate Trails, Miscellaneous, VDHR, Parks and History Commission. And then um, the Miscellaneous, um, Denise has the explanation of what those are. So I, I'm hoping that, you know, if, they, if there's too many words, they can see the numbers and appreciate the relativity of the Confederate markers. We're not talking streets, we're talking just the markers. Do you have any comments on it at all? Other than I think it's a great idea. I, I have a question. Yes, Tammy. No, that's Anne. Oh, is it Anne? <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I just I wasn't looking. I just heard a voice. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So, so the narrative you just read is where? Remind me. The narrative of what you just read about the markers, or it that goes, it goes, it goes in with um, <clears throat> where we have um, oh, I mean, the background, and it says marker count. It comes. Are you doing? Hey, you're doing this in order. Um, so, so um, I'm trying. <laughs> so my question is, on that same piece of paper, I mean, on that, just is that followed by the little chart? Yeah, the chart. Yes, yes. That's why I. That's why I updated. It's all in one. That was Denise's suggestion because we have to explain what it's in right there up front. So the the actual lists are in the um, addenda. But this is this is explaining it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay, and the and the last that um, I have before we turn everything to Denise is family names. And the more we reviewed the list, the filtered list and the names, originally we had written and you all had agreed approved um, the fact that there were there were families that had been here. We looked at the 1760, the 1860. There were all these these families that had been here, and they happened to have a Confederate, but it was named for them, and they'd been here for a long, long time. Then we kept. Then, as we looked during uh, further on, we discovered that in the late eight, late 19th and early 20th century, really up into the mid 20th century, you had these developments. And you'd see these names, but when you started, Chris did so much of this research, you started looking, you find, well, that had been farmland. That, you know, this had been his store, this had been his homeland. So we we adjusted the statement of historical family names to say that we came up with the term a heritage of place. So that just like you have a conservation easement that flows with the deed. So you ended up having the, the, the heritage of place. You had the name of the original family that went with the streets or the subdivision. And we have added that in to explain why some names are there, but they are not, um, should not be concerned, considered as solely Confederate. So I'm hunting to see if I can find my piece of paper here. Um, yes, so the paragraph the paragraph <clears throat> that I added in case you haven't had a chance to see it. This is a, tw a, a 24th. That's a Sunday edit. During the post war years and well into the 20th century, acres of county farmland were sold for development. The resulting subdivision street and public space names could contain the family names associated with that acreage, reflecting a heritage of place. A previous generation's Confederate service was not a factor. Therefore, in these instances confirmed through research, the asset was given historical family name designation. Thank you, Chris, for
for much of that. Thank you, everybody. But I just know Chris has been deep into this. So we've added that and hope that that will be further clarification for the ultimate readers of this. Um, I love this. I think this is really well stated. Um, I have a lot of these in my district, and so there are a couple tweaks that we might want to make. Um, there are some cases where the research showed that the asset name uh, didn't predate but postdated. So, for instance, there was a confederate there, but the family really was in the area afterward. And so we don't know that the name has anything to do with the confederacy, but it didn't predate. So we could say predated or postdated. That's why it says during the post war years and the end of the 20th century, this oh, is what. Oh, oh, I see. So that's the contrast. Oh, I yes. see. Okay. Yes. So um, because we, we were concerned because, yes, that's exactly what happened. So we're saying that they, that, yeah. In the in that paragraph, that's what we were attempting to say. Okay, I, I didn't get that. I I just got that. That's how the name, like it was the predated name that showed up no, after the post. No, no, so that's how I was reading it. Okay, um, because they sold their land and it became suburbia basically, and it the heritage of place means it rep, rep, it retained the fam the names that had been associated with that acreage prior to development. I gotcha. Um, okay, so uh, so that's good. I wasn't I wasn't reading it that way. I'll have to go back and read it again and, and make sure that solves it for me. Um, the other okay. thing is that um, in my experience, that the name was either associated with the acreage or acreage nearby. So sometimes the um, the place where the street name was was not where that family was located, but the developer had pulled three names from you know. Um, a few acres away, and so it isn't exact, but it, but if we could put like nearby in there, that would um, make it more accurate. Um, and then, you know, there's a certain element that, uh, you know, in, in my area, at least, it's possible that it's named after the Confederate, but it's unconfirmed. So then there's we no element have it. If you know, then our rule is if it's not absolutely positively confirmed, okay. it doesn't go on the list. No, no, I just meant it here. Yes, I understand. I'm not sure that this reflects the element of the unknown in it, because I can't prove that these family <laughs> names are only about the property and not about the Confederate. But anyway, but that's just my experience. Right. I'm sure it's everybody's. No, it's this, everywhere, Tammy. Yeah. And this is something that <clears throat> I'm not sure, again, if I wrote this to you all, if I said it, so if I'm repeating, forgive me. But we talk, we've talked a long time about about perf a perfect example are the Stewarts in Herndon. And initially, Greg called me about Stewart Ridge, Stewart this, Stewart that, and we talked about the Battle of Drainsville and the fact that Jeb Stewart was there. And it's like, of course, that has to be for Jeb Stewart. Well, then Chris starts doing his research and he finally is able to, to talk to the Historical Society of Herndon, the Herndon Historical Society. And she says, we had lots of Stuarts that were in Herndon that lived there, families. And there are some of them are in the Cedar Grove uh, Cemetery. So we have no absolute proof that the names are family or Jeb Stewart. So we decided that it's better to err and have somebody say, well, this is proof that it was, and we can say, whoops, we missed it. Rather than insist on something and somebody comes back and says, you are wrong. So we are being very conservative simply because of the political sensitivity to all of this. So the rule at this point is if it's not confirmable, it's not on the list. And the other decision is that we talked about last time when I got Yellow Tavern mixed up, Carol, is that if it's a geographical location of a of an actual event, a, a battle or a skirmish, if it's if it's outside of Fairfax County, then we're not listing it. And the Yellow Tavern is an example. So oh, that's okay. kind of where we are. Yeah, that's good. So, um, yeah, th uh, that is exactly how I handled this very conservatively. Um, right. I think what would fix the predates, post dates, um, 
the civil war for me is if at the beginning of the second paragraph you put in addition good because okay. first you're saying oh. You know, the research proved that it predated, in addition, during the post-war years, this happened. Thank you. That's good. good. Okay. Got it. I have a question. Oh, I have a comment. Is that Anne? Yes, ma'am. Um, um, this, this whole conversation reminds me of something that I'd sort of forgotten about, but we talked about it a lot in the beginning of this process how we were going to do you know use our best effort to get as much information as we could but it was really an initial effort and would no doubt be followed by research uh it's a launching a launching pad for you know for the ones that aren't confirmed one way or another well, somebody else can go and read every newspaper from when it was developed and look at people's letters and diaries so we don't have that. I don't. I can't remember that we have that sense in anything in this report. And it might best go in the executive summary, or or somewhere if we want to say it. And I think maybe we do because we sure thought about it a lot in the beginning, and then we've just gotten so involved that we've I've, it, it's gone out of my head till this conversation where I realized. Oh boy, there's so much more research to be done. <laughs> well, then, then maybe we could make that in the executive summary, but I remind you all over and over again, we have a specific charge and this report goes to the BOS and we have to, and it's very tight. It yes. is very tight. And ever since the first meeting, I among with all of you have said, it is so hard to tell people that, that either by vocation or avocation are our historians and do research to say this is not an academic exercise and this is we are answering their question as best we can in the time allotted and we've done an incredible job with again thanks to staff helping or we're helping staff in a way in many times and and so um that's you know that i think is up to us but i don't think that's not the purpose of this report. So whatever. I mean, I'm not going to veto it, but I'm we have to remember what we're doing and my hope is my hope is that they will read it. My hope is that they will read the background. You know, really. Um this is Mary. Yes, ma'am. I would say when you present it to the board of supervisors, you could say with all due diligence we did, you know, our research under unusual circumstances of a pandemic, et cetera, you know, just to give them, uh, you know, as volunteers, whatever. Not, right. Not for sympathy, but for understanding. Right. Good point. Yeah. But this is, you know, we have done, uh, you know, a lion's share and more trying to get this together under not the best circumstances. So. Right. I, Thank you. I think that's true. Okay, anything else? All right, then where we are in the agenda is that we are moving to Denise. I have to find, there it is. I had everything stacked. So I'm, I'm good, I'm up to you, Denise, and I will turn it over to you and to um, whatever you want Chris to add. And again, with so much appreciation to everybody for what they've done. Okay, go. Give me one moment. Here we go. Okay, um, so you all have been receiving um, emails from me late into the <laughs> late wee hours of the morning. Um, all, all researchers should have received an email containing the following items for your districts. Compiled filtered lists with notes <clears throat> and those uh, those with confirmed Confederate associations have been highlighted in red font and the completed inventory forms for those resources identified with Confederate associations. So if there's red font, if you see red font, you should also have a, uh, an inventory form for that resource filled out. If you could review those documents and get back with me by the end of the week, 
So that's Friday with any corrections or edits or questions that you have. Um, I just to let you know, uh, Mary has received Braddock. Carol and Greg received Drainsville. Anne and Barbara received Hunter Mill. Phyllis received Lee. Barbara Peters received Mason. And Cheryl received Sully. Now, can, can I interrupt? This is Harry. Can I just ask a question? Sure. You were talking. You were talking about the red. Did you mean both or just the Confederate names? Just the con the Confederate names in the table. So uh, not just the name. So it's the Confederate name, the name that it was matched with, the the resource name, the con the uh, Confederate name that it was matched with, and then the explanation. There, you should see red across a, a red um, entry across the whole line in the table. Okay, I'm not sure I got that. Okay, I'll take a look. Thank you. Okay, Sorry. Thank you. Oh no, uh, no worries. That's this is the time to ask if you if there are any questions. Um, we, we can follow up after the meeting if you'd like, just to make sure. And I could send it to you again, Carol. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think you listed mine. I know I the template. Sorry. So, yeah, I was just about to say, <laughs> um, so under uh, for Mount Vernon, Providence and Springfield, uh, those were sent um, to the Virginia room for review. So those three districts are still under review. So um, I know that they're in Providence and Springfield. There were some there's some re um, reorganization that we're doing um, to consolidate all the street names that are associated with subdivisions under the subdivisions template to make it conform with the way we're doing the rest of the districts. So that's what's happening. Not in Mount Vernon though, um, Tammy, you're, because you had no uh, templates filled out, we're just um, making sure that, uh, especially the Biggies, the Mosby's, the Lees, the Stewart's, the, those, those ones that we were catching um, in every district that, um, they're, they're, that there's consistency across the districts. Does that answer your question? Tammy. Yes, thank you. Okay, um, the other thing that you since we went over the outline that you will have noticed that uh, because the request from the board was to compile a list of those places in the county which are named for the Confederacy. Family names as a standalone section has been removed due to inconsistencies across districts. So the information is going to be included in the notes section of the tables. So all the information you all wrote in that note section will still remain, but we're not gonna have a separate section called family names where we list all of those family names in the background information. All of that research will still, that was done, will still go to the Virginia room with the report though. Are there any questions about that? Okay. Um, a section for crossed district resources was added and we've identified three, uh, three resources that sort of needed that separate section. One was Lee Highway. The other one was Lee Jackson Memorial Highway. And then the last was the Pender area or uh, Ox Hill. So each of these resources will have just one inventory report, which lists the associated resources, the streets, the shopping centers, the subdivisions, the civic associations in one place, noting the corresponding magisterial district. The entry and the data tables will refer back to the inventory report for the corresponding resource. So for instance, um, if you have Lee Highway in the Providence District in the data table, it will say C Lee Highway. And that, that'll just be a reference back to that report and that um, and it will have Providence District noted under Lee Highway that Lee Highway is in the Providence District along with the other districts that it's in. Are there any questions about that? I want to just add that the, the Pender was a late arrival 
because Mary found a marker. And then the more we research, there's an entire community there. And any of you that live up in my part of the county, you know, Pender is Pender is Pender, Pender, Pender. And um, it was a Confederate general at the Battle of Ox Hill Chantilly. And so it turned out there's so many assets there that it has its own, it has its own, it has its own page. So I thought it was an interesting, that's what the research leads to. It's always finding. Right, and I think it cross it crosses districts. So that's right. It does three, I think. Right, Sully, um, Springfield, and Providence, or something like something. I don't, but yeah. That's right. That's the three. Yeah, Mary. I was gonna say Mary. Mary Lipsy can tell us. Yeah. Yes, Sully, I think Sully, that's right. Providence, Sully, Providence, and um, Springfield. Springfield. Yes. Yeah. Great. And then um, finally, that you we've already discussed the summary table that was added for the markers, but we um, and thanks to Cami's suggestion as well, we're yes. going to add a, a summary table for all of the uh, confirmed, uh, uh, confirmed Confederate names for just a kind of quick reference at That's the beginning good. of that section. So the beginning of the finding section we'll just have a, a, a table listing all of those resources. So um, if you want the further information, you can, you can go to the table, it's to the template itself, but um, the table will be there just for a quick reference. It's by, by, by district, is that right, Denise? It, um, what I was planning on doing, since we do have cross district um, resources, is just having a list of the resource and then what district it's in. Oh, good, okay. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Will that be in alphabetical order? Maybe. I, I'm not not sure yet. It's not created yet. And that that's um, everything that I have to say about the report. I do ask you all though, um, if you've received information from me <clears throat> from me and you're uh, reviewing it. Please do have your comments and your edits back to me by Friday, because it, this is going to be posted in its entirety for the history commission meeting on Wednesday. Right. So, oh, so this isn't one of those midnight by Fridays. No, no, no. 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 What, time, what time would you like them by? Noon, noon, Friday, noon at the latest on Friday. Thank you, Ann, for pointing that out. Yes. And Anne is doing the executive summary, so that's why she asks, right? I can I could use all the time I can get. The um the other so. thing you you may have said ten times already, but it bears saying again is that you really Denise wants one big answer from us full of all of our comments. Yeah. So that it's not dribbling in under three or ten separate emails. Word, uh, word document, yes. One document. Mm -hmm. A list. So yeah. like in my district, Barbara sent me an email and Elise sent me an email. So I'm just keeping them and going to throw them into a separate thing. It's a little hard. Well, it'll work. What Elise did, it worked. Hers is very tidy. She she just sort of, she just grabbed her favorite row or two and pasted it into the document and wrote her comments under it. It was very it was pretty easy to follow, I think. Well, I hope so. We'll see. I have to remind everybody that Denise extended the time for us, which has crunched her even tighter. So we appreciate it, but we have to respect her. This is like, there is no extension after Friday. There just isn't. So, any, Denise, anything else? Nope, that's it anybody has any questions can, can i interrupt again it's carol i took a look and yes i did find it so thank you wonderful thank you carol uh, this is mary would it be helpful i can't believe i'm asking this to have a, a category list of markers by district no no okay that's good <laughs> Anything, anyone else? So I want to clarify that that was Barbara that said no. No, I didn't say anything. 
Okay, so who oh. responded to Mary? I thought somebody said no. Not me. I thought it was you, Denise. No, I, I didn't say anything. I thought it was Barbara. No, it I, I thought it was Barbara as well. No, I didn't say a word, guys. Carol? Not me. Mary? I didn't say it. I asked it. Phyllis. Well, what what would we get out of it? Um it's it's, it's just helpful to the supervisors as they if they go back to the addendum and they're looking at the markers, if they want to know what is in their district. Now and they I they can, the title. They they will be receiving it by a list. They'll be receiving it by electronic methods and can can uh, yeah they could do a search search I suppose yeah. yeah I mean you're you've got every district there in that one two three fourth row down. Well, you have them, you know, you have them listed by type and content. Right. And that's it. That's the over one. And so this would be a subset of that. Correct. Correct. I have no comment. I mean, to me, I, I keep thinking about. I keep thinking about the context in which they're receiving this and all they're dealing with. And I'm not sure when budget happens with the park authority. It was always crisis right at December. So I don't know where I have no idea where what, but considering all that they're dealing with. I keep wondering what we can do to make to give them. The quick information they need if they don't have the time to. Absorb are we over 400 pages Denise? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't nature. It, I think the supervisors are going to want to know what's in their district. I mean, I just think it's human nature. I think so. Okay. So if that would help them see, oh, okay, then I can look up these and I don't care how many there are all over the county. I'm concerned what there are in Hunter Mill or in Braddock or whatever. So um, it's another, it's another thing to do, Denise, but. Okay, I will do it. Yeah, I was going to say Denise. Denise is not going to do that. Yeah, no, no, I'm just asking about putting it in. I know you're not. I know you're not. Mary, you just keep finding things when you think you're finished, and you find more to do. It's it's just I'm thinking of organization. If it'd be right at the front, mm -hmm. okay, they may not want to read all of the 93 markers. They want to know just what's in their district. I don't see a negative to it. Okay. Yeah. Now, the, the second part of that is then do I have to repeat whether it's Civil War or um, Union or Confederate? They're going to get a list, a separate well, list. So, something that I can do um, is actually group the markers by district. Yeah. So you don't even you don't have to create the table. I can just group them by district. Okay. And it just as I've grouped the Confederate resources, the Confederately named resources by district. And I've grouped the tables by district. I can group the markers by district. Okay. That's a quick that's quick. That's just reorganization. Right. Okay. Not creating and counting and all of those right. things. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that would be very helpful. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. All right. And I, I hope everyone's impressed with the fact that we have so many. We're not surprised, but it's nice to be able to say over half of the markers are they deal with the they deal with the civil war. It deals with that we were crossroads of war here. Yeah. And I just think, you know, I keep pressing we have to get that to them that these are not something that they go in and take away. So, and because of because of the um, the VDHR marker at the courthouse, that everyone is very sensitive it, it, within the community is very sensitive to the markers, and what and and you know what will what will happen with them. Mm -hmm. So, um, anything we can do to make sure they understand what they are about and where they are, I think, is beneficial. Right. Do we have anything else? 
Cheryl, you can send us an email if you want to. I know it's frustrating, but welcome for being here and listening. <laughs> so honestly, I think that we might be finished, which is a record. It's an hour meeting instead of a two hour or two and a half hour meeting, right? Oh, surely we can think of something. I think we're good. Now I have, um, at the bottom of the agenda, I said that it would be determined as necessary because um, I don't really know, Denise, from here where this committee goes. We have to give a report to the full commission and um, presumably they, you know, Ann has, and you'll need to send out if you don't mind the revisions that I sent you all. I just sent them to y'all today so um i think they got everything that was done on the weekend but now we have the update for the for the lost cause that's just and lost cause and civil war and and um no family the family name so let me let me get them to you if not today tomorrow because i've gotten some suggestions here okay. and i'll try and include those and then send them to the committee and then also that you send them to the the commission is that okay denise yes that does sound good i i i have i have had trouble keeping up with all the revisions um which which is why i'm not commenting i'm just waiting for the, the last word <laughs> for the last and the ones you have that came today are are 10 28 which is today and so um I need to. So that's I need the final to, version, right? <laughs> no, because I have to add it. Somebody wants me to change, add a wrap up sentence to the lost cause. Right. So the lost cause finally go away. <laughs> so I have to do that. So I will say, um, and then on the family names, we've, um, Tammy has suggested I put in the phrase in addition at the beginning. Um, I think Civil War is done. So, Barbara, just to confirm, because I have a, a question about the Civil War, um, the the version that was edited and, and added to was the incorrect version, and and you went back and changed that. Is that right? No, you no. That was I didn't absorb all of Cheryl's things. I'm right. So I, I guess I'm I have I'm confused about which version we're on. I I need. Would you please send me? The very last version and call and, and you can in the subject say the last version. I Civil did. War for Texas County. Okay, that if I have it, then that's great. Okay, thank you. Civil War. Yes, I did. And it says the, it says the, the 1028 revision. Yes. And the only changes were the numbers, the, the numbers of troops. And okay. also, um, Cheryl wanted me, and, which was a good point, instead of saying the first armed conflict, say first military conflict, because she pointed out in her notes, there had been other armed things, but it wasn't military. So you have it, but I can do it to send it again, but it's definitely finished. And the lost cause, I will come up with an ending statement. Families, I'll add a word. And then I think that's it. And I'll put up there, the date and final and they can you plug them right in because otherwise they're right from your report. Okay. Okay. So, um, oh, and then we have to decide about if, if it's, I'm going to reference that there was a second monument to Peyton, Peyton, uh, Anderson that was moved. Right. Yes. That's Chris's. Yes. That's, that's a good idea. I agree. Carol, is that right? I'll put that in there yeah. too. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay, I'll just make a note of it. And the other one was um, at at the end of this with the statement about John Quincy Marr. Note that the board of supervisors voted to have it uh, removed. So that's updated. Okay, I think I have everything. <clears throat> And I will attempt to get that to you. Um, if not, I'll try today, if not tomorrow morning, if that's okay. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Is that everything, everyone? Sounds good. Okay. Good. Thank you all very much. Let's go party, right?
<laughs> what time? It, it might be next summer. <laughs> I think it probably will be. We'll have to have a reunion. The committee will have a reunion. You know, no, one, yeah. of the, one of the best events in recent uh, years was when the um, sesquicentennial committee get, had its wrap up. Um, because, you know, everybody had worked really hard all over the county for five or six years. And so um, and it was it was a big, big effort and it was a, everybody enjoyed it. And so we all went out to the, a nice event with speeches and lots of food and drink at the uh, Bull Run Winery. And so uh, you know, it was it was really good. So we'll be expecting that. I believe we have put five years effort into the last few months. So Barbara will be buying the rounds. <laughs> well, and it's appropriate to have it at Bull Run since the fall Civil War. It was wonderful. <laughs> it was a really fun. Um, it was it was really good because we'd all been meeting, at se you know, several times a year minimum for all those years and going to conferences and going to each other's events. Um, so it, it really, it brought the, it was a great way to bring the history community of the county together. And uh, so let's make sure this one doesn't um, do the opposite. We'll do our best. <laughs> all right, I will, I will, when I'm sending this to Denise, I'm sending it to y'all, and if I've missed anything, send it to me in red or something so that it can go in on Friday. This is Wednesday, so we have a day, and I think I have what everybody wants. Okay. And so in case I have missed something, I want to make sure, okay? Okay. All right, with that, I'm going to adjourn the meeting and thank you all for all your hours and time and burning the midnight oil and all of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you. will see everybody on Wednesday. What? I heard, wait a minute. Who said, wait a minute? It could have been somebody talking to their dog. No one? All right, I'm gone. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.